with us this morning. We just want to welcome you here and let's worship God. Come on, put your hands together.
sing for me every day that your love never fails. You stay the same.
But just out of your hearts, just adore him with your own words. Come on. Come on. You can do more than that. He's a God that deserves our best. He is 
is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, lift up those voices. Lift up those voices. him then we begin to experience his presence we begin to experience his love beyond a sermon we begin to experience his love because the beauty of it is his word says he inhabits the praises of his people we serve a God that isn't just into long distance relationships but he says if there is a person that is actually worshiping and giving me praise that he comes right to where you are comes into that place and he inhabits he comes he dwells he comes to the dwelling and I don't know uh, what your heart's like right now but I've got a feeling there's somebody here this morning where a touch is not enough where a touch is not enough where a little bit is great and we're thankful for it but there's just something that stirs in our hearts for more is there anybody that has a stirring for more in their hearts? You have a stirring for more. And it says that when you begin to praise and lift up a worship to him, that it's not just a touch. It's a God that inhabits. It's a God that steps in. It's a God that changes everything. And one moment of time, when he steps in, depression cannot stay. When he steps in, miracles begin to happen. Signs and wonders, healings and salvations. Is there anybody here this morning? Come on, lift up a praise this morning. Lift up a praise this morning. Put those voices together and let's give him a shout this morning come on Lord we give you a shout of praise oh God before there's ever one testimony because we know you're that good because we know you're so good we can praise you before the testimony we can give you our love and our adoration oh God because you are that good because you're that good and I've got good news for you. The goodness of God is here this morning. I said he's here this morning. And when he shows up, change happens. If there's anybody that's ready for some change in their life, I want you just to just give somebody a, 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 a love in this morning, a high five, and just tell them to get ready, just to get ready, because you're never going to be the same again. You're never going to be the same again again that's the way I look at it when I come into his presence I'm looking not just for a touch but I'm looking to be changed 
I'm looking to be changed. I'm looking to be changed. And, you know, a lot of times we do our altar service. We're one of those churches that we're not so modern and so technical that we do away with altar calls. We have lights. We have the technologies of, uh, of today's technology. But we, we are not so far advanced that we've gotten rid of the most important thing in church. We still believe in an altar. We still believe in a cross that bleeds. We still believe that His blood has the same cleansing power that it did that they sang about back on sawdust floors, back before uh, they didn't even, uh, maybe you wouldn't even be able to get drums and guitar inside, but they were able to lift up a song, and they still had an altars where people would come. And, and, and we do that week in, week out. We're never going to get to a place where we don't give somebody the opportunity to give their heart afresh to Jesus. We're never going to have a service go by where there's not an opportunity for somebody that needs a miracle in their life to see heaven move in their life. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, guys, just this week, I, in the healing rooms, the ladies... Uh, this week ear popped open that she was able to hear guys we're talking this week not in the good old days not back in a revival sir hey this isn't power and love this was just this is just an ordinary week of a believer and the church where there's some believers some radical believers an ordinary week where ears still pop open where he's the same yesterday today and forever are you ready this morning something tells me you guys I don't know were you overeating some biscuits and gravy? Is that what it is? Did that biscuits and gravy slow you down in here this morning? I don't know if you're ready for this morning, but God has something for you. I'm telling you what, he's got something for you. And so we still, we want to just begin here this morning with making the fresh commitment to Jesus. Uh, we don't have to wait till the end, but I want you, you can stay seated. You don't have to stand wherever you are that we're making this fresh commitment because we we do believe the word and your heart better be right before you take some communion that's all I got to tell you here this morning and so before there's a sermon preached before I have to stand up here I don't have to beg you you know God is good you know that God's got some great things we're just gonna make a fresh surrender in our hearts here this morning and father we just thank you for our hearts Lord we bring our hearts before you here this morning Lord and we repent God we just say God we love you we thank you forgive us of our sins. Thank you for giving your very best. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life for us and that you rose again. And we just thank you for that power and that strength from heaven, God, that allows us to live all the days of our life for you. And we make that fresh surrender to you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Um, you know, we're very blessed that here this morning that we get now, now we get so blessed to be able to see pastors happen. Sandy with us is here this morning. Now, they, they know. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm telling you. It could have been so much different. Could have been a different outcome. Now they know. They know it's a spirit-filled church. So I'm giving you guys all a warning. They're here, but they're sore. So you keep that spirit-filled hug to a, a uh, seeker-friendly hug this morning. Just this morning, she'll allow you to do it. But um, but uh, um, pastors happen, Sandy. We're so glad. Uh, that you've come this morning, and we welcome you here back. It's good that you're back home. Well, you, why don't you come up here, and um, and we're going to be taking communion in a moment anyways, so you, you, you can make your way. Now, for those that may not know,
Sandy, we're in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. You guys are in Louisville, Kentucky. Going to a fabulous truck show. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was a fabulous truck show to me. I wanted to go real bad, so I made air. I had airline tickets, and I had a hotel, and I get this little, this little call on the phone at home at, at work and said, could I go with you? I'd like to go to the... And I said, okay. So I canceled my airline tickets. I think non-refundable. <laughs> I, I, had, I had a red roof or something, so I said, that won't get it. So I had to get, <laughs> I had to get another, another hotel. And uh, I was going to keep you there for two or three days, just you and I. That was a surprise. Well, it was, uh, it was a surprise. We went to the Louisville Truck Show. We got at the intersection across the street from the expo, and the traffic light was red, and we were sitting there. But when they decided to go across, when it changed, the driver just went across, and this guy's coming the other way trying to beat a red light in a great big intersection, and he kind of T-boned us on Pastor Sandy's side. Well, we were blessed. Uh, he hit the center post on the on the thing and it threw glass she had glass in her mouth and everything and uh, I looked at her and she says I can't breathe now I didn't hear that but she said I can't breathe so what do I do I'm trying to get my seatbelt off and I can't get my seatbelt off so uh, Lord was with us took care of us the whole way <laughs> I had quite an experience at the hospital we, yeah we go to the hospital and, and of course they're paying attention to her and not too much to me and, uh, and that's okay. That's okay. I prefer her every day of the, every day of the week, you know. Uh, but I said, you know, this, I don't understand this. They want to give her morphine in the bed and they want to pe put me on the street. I don't, I don't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was kind of like that when we came home. Somebody brought something to the house and we thank you for everything that came to the house. But somebody came and gave her cupcakes and me vegetables, you know. <laughs> so, so but it, it but everybody changed. knows you're on a diet. They were just blessed. I know that. The vegetables were wonderful, but yeah. I'm sitting there looking at cauliflower and broccoli, and you've got this icing look, uh, looks like a snow-capped peak on a cupcake. And, and I helped you a lot, honey. You didn't gain any weight. So, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't <laughs> God is so wonderful. <laughs> Gotta have a way to get even, all I can do. It's pitiful. It is. It, it is. But you know, God is so gracious and wonderful. Even when you're in the hospital room and they're telling you all these reports about me, I've had a heart attack and all these horrible things. And, and God, though, he just surrounds you with his presence. Yes, yes. The Bible says in Psalm 8, you know, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained perfect praise because of God's enemy, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. And when we lift up our hands and our voices and we start praising the living God, the enemy has to bow his evil knee yes. to the wonderful name of Jesus. And yes. there's such power. And we as believers can decree a thing, like it says in the book of Job, and it will be established for yes. us. And you know, beloved, you, you got to fight that good fight of faith. The enemy will come after you, but you just turn it around and you go after him. And you speak the word of God and the word of faith over, yes. over your body and decree that thing and know that God is with you. Yes. And he will not leave you orphan because he's a good God and he loves us. Yes, he is. And so here we are. Here. Wonderful Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Well, we, got, we serve a wonderful Jesus. And... Regardless of the scheme of man, the attacks that the enemy has to take you out, they've come to share with you this morning. The devil may be trying to take you out, but God said, it's not over. It's not over. Oh, no. It's not over. And, and that is, I mean, because in all reality, when you're in a taxi cab, who buckles up in the back seat? You know, I my, do. My... I've said that before. I do. <laughs> My dear husband, see, he'll never buckle up. And I'll say, honey, it's the law. We got to follow the law. And so we got in that back seat. And I didn't want to get in that cab because the Holy Spirit said no. And, you know, you got to obey the Spirit of God. And we got in and, and Happy even says, my wife's concerned about your driving. Are you a good driver? And he wasn't going to buckle up. And I, I said, honey, please buckle up. And you just knew it was coming, and so I'm just praying. And I just, I just thought it, it, you knew in your heart something was gonna happen, but at the same time you thought, well, I'm hearing wrong. But you gotta obey the Spirit of God. Yes. He will rescue us from things if we will obey. You gotta obey the voice. And if I would have obeyed, 
we wouldn't have happened and if I wouldn't have asked him to take me with him. <laughs> or, so. or, or if, if your husband would have obeyed you. Yes. Yes, yeah. I, maybe, I, you know. <laughs> it's better to obey God than man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay, no, all right. But he's, he's I'm a, sorry. I'm teasing We're doing him. Good. There, are, there have been any number of times in financial situation, business dealings and stuff that had Pastor not Sandy not said what she said and I followed what she said, all kinds of outcomes would have been different. So don't, don't be foolish and think that the woman that you chose that I think has great wisdom and great knowledge and is led by the Spirit of the God, except if you're getting in a cab. <laughs> no, so 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 always always listen and, and you know, Lord's using her a lot of times. So. Oh yes. yes. You know what I'm excited about, Pastor Greg? Resurrection seed. Have you been thinking about that? Yes. God gave His very best on Easter, and for many years now we have planted our resurrection seed, whether it be you know a week of our our salary or a month or a day, we've added to our tithe and offering. And God has blessed that resurrection seed. And all of you here at church, get ready because Easter Sunday's coming. And if you'll step out in faith and plant that resurrection seed, God will seed. just take it. I believe, you know, we have planted, and that seed goes before us. And in that seed, there's protection, there's deliverance, there's healing. Everything is in a seed. And so if you give your best, just step out and do it this coming. I just had to say that. I'm yes, sorry. no, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right, you know? you're right. And, and, you know, it's, it's because of the covenant. And that's what we're getting ready to do now, the, the ushers, as they get ready to serve the people. It's because of this covenant that we that's have right. with, with an amazing God. Yes. That that blood that protects. Covenant of healing. Yes. Prosperity. Ushers, go ahead and start serving. Wonderful covenant. And we have to appropriate that covenant and grab a hold of it and declare it and confess it over ourselves over our seed, over the things that pertain to us and our church body, and confess that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you never know. See, this is the thing that's incredible about life. No man has promised tomorrow. That's right. You don't know what the day can bring. No, no. You think you're getting in a taxi cab, but really, yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, but you never know what's ahead. That's right. And the importance of being in covenant with God and this precious covenant that we have with and, God. You know, and having your heart right, like people will say, you know, people will wait and sometimes I'll get saved someday or I'll turn my life over someday. But you don't know what could happen in that day. When, when that happened, I didn't have time to holler out Jesus or forgive me of my sins or even plead the blood of Jesus. It was so quick, I didn't have time. And of course, afterwards you do, but that's why we got to always have our heart right and our life right with God. So are they, are they truthful or are they honest? Do you see your life flash before your eyes? You don't. You I was sit. knocked out. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so don't bank on you'll have time because no, that's not true. No, don't bank on that. That's no. not true. That's yeah. right. And you got to keep, you know, unforgiveness out of your heart. You got to keep your heart pure. Any animosity you have towards anybody, anything, you got to keep your heart pure before God. Yeah. 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 And you never know what tomorrow holds. That's right. And that's why he did what he did. That's right. He gave us life, and life is a precious gift, and it's to be cherished every day. Life. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason why, and, and Jesus, one of his things that he told us to do was to do this in remembrance of him. He said to do this in remembrance of me. Because this was a covenant between God and man. When man was so lost, he could do nothing to get back to God. God came to man. And you would think, how could we forget? But we've all been guilty of it. But one thing we can never forget is the price that Jesus paid. Price for protection for our souls. For the protection of our bodies. For the protections of our spirit. And he gathered his disciples together on that evening and that time. And scripture tells us that he took the bread and he broke it. He blessed it. He broke it. 
me gave it. And as everybody stands here this morning as we get ready to take. And he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. This body he sacrificed for us. He gladly went to the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was laid upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Let's take of the bread. And he took the cup. Those simple words, he took the cup. He could have rejected the cup of suffering, but he took the cup. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant that is shed for the remission of sins. He says, always do this in remembrance of him. And as we celebrate this morning as a church body, we celebrate our Jesus, the finished work of the cross. And let's take. And you know, Pastor Greg, before Jesus went to Gethsemane, the Bible says they sang a song. Yeah. He sang. He gave honor and praise and worship and glory to his God before he had to do what he did. He worshiped. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And you know, sometimes you don't realize, obviously, until you go through something. And you know, with what you guys have just gone through, it was times when taking breaths was painful. Taking a breath. Just something that we take for granted that is simple. But yet, in you experiencing the pain fresh. Yes. You know. And, you know, you can't lay down on a bed because the pain is so bad. So you have to sit up and you don't sleep all night. But God, it's just like he surrounds you with his glory. Oh, precious Jesus. I just feel the spirit of the living God in here so strong. Just lift your hands right now and let healing come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing today. Father, I ask that your healing power would flow. Flow through the bodies right now. Let that resurrection power come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Touch your people. Touch Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else is 
having trouble in their spine. And I see that loose. depressed in here this morning. You act like it's all right, but you're depressed. And that spirit's lifting off right now. That spirit of depression, go. Go in the name of Jesus. How dare you touch God's people? How dare you in the name of Jesus? Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you for the stripes, oh Lord, that you went through, God, so that we could be healed, spirit, soul, and body. And Lord, I just thank you for the healing that, that are taking place, Lord, even in the seats, Lord. We just thank you for the atmosphere of heaven that's in this place. We just thank you for the activity of heaven, oh Lord. We just thank you for touching. We thank you for touching here today. We just thank you for lives being changed. Hmm. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. That's one of my favorite songs, obviously. Lord, that you are our portion. That you are our portion, oh God. You are, you are Abraham's exceeding and great reward you are you are the inheritance of heaven you are our saving grace you are our strength you are our shield and you are the glory and the lifter of our head and we just give you praise here this morning God we give you praise Lord we give you praise oh God for all the things that you have done and are still doing that you are doing you can stay where you are you can don't have to move go any place you know <laughs> this is what church is all about there ought to be a reason why even the word of God said it is good for us to come together that it is good for us oh let us come into the house of the Lord it's good to go to a place where you're expecting that, that you know that God's going to do something incredible something special that God's going to do something that he shows up I love it when he shows up shows off 
and he gets all the credit. <laughs> he gets all of the credit. God, I just thank you for the changing of doctor reports. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Something else that I love is that Chris is upstairs right now in the faith factory, and the children are doing the same thing. The children are up there praying for each other. The wonderful testimonies of the kids that are praying for each other upstairs. It, it's beautiful, you know. You come to a place where it's more than veggie tales that's being shown to your kids this morning. It's more. It's more. Aren't you glad we serve a God that has more? Lord, we thank you. Lord, that we take the limits off of you, oh Lord. You have full reign, oh Lord, to exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or even ask. Oh. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. Um. <laughs> See, this is where we said it's wrong. You, how do you go from that to doing announcements? I mean, really? I would say just look in the bulletin, but we had technical difficulty with the printer. You can look on the website. Um, but we are glad that you're here this morning. And um, we do have clipboards that are being passed, and that's just for those. If you're here for the first time, we do have a place for you where you can fill out that information. And for the regular attenders and uh, members, you know uh, what to do. It's just to help us to take care of you better, to minister to you more effectively. And um, we just know uh, God's got great things in store for you, and we want to be a part of it. And, and just know that there's some great things. Um, as we get ready uh, to give here this morning, Pastor Sandy already shared from her heart. She was actually, Pastor Sapp and Sandy were the ones that started, I don't know how many years ago, the Resurrection Seed. Uh, but we've been doing it for years. Every year we're God, we celebrate, obviously, God giving his best where we give our best as well. I can remember testimonies of, Someone doing a, getting a second job for a resurrection seed. And, um, you know, it's just something that we do here, and it's our heart just to let you know that's going to be coming up, that you can be preparing uh, for that as well. And, um, you know, the beauty of giving and the beauty of giving into God's work, into something that's eternal, um, it's a reward that continues to happen. And... Um, You know, we've touched on it and, 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 and briefly. It's just amazing. The people that are brought out in Scripture that Jesus brings to our attention. And, and uh, it's the widow's might. Or it's, it's the boy who has just a small lunch that God takes. And he takes what we have. And he begins to put his blessing upon it. And, and multiplication happens. Even in reference to communion that we spoke about, that, that it's kind of um, the ways of heaven where it's taken, that he blesses it, and he breaks it, and he gives it. And, and um, I don't know what season you are right now that you're walking through. I don't know if you're in the blessing, the breaking, or in the giving. But as long as you're connected to the source, it can all be good. And, and so, as we give our seed, the power of a seed is, is something that it's even hard for us to explain unless you're a farmer that you know a lot more than the ordinary person. When you look out at a crop and see what happens in the power of the seed, what's in the, the DNA of the seed that allows it to produce the fruit. And it's all wrapped up in something that is so small. It's wrapped up into something that doesn't look like much. All we know is we put it in the ground, we give it some water. We don't know how it all works, but, but we know that we can pull up to a drive through and order a number one, and there it is. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those things as we are giving, 
that we know, obviously, when wrapped with our heart and with our faith, that God can take a seed. And we don't know how it all works. We don't know how we can get it all figured out. But all we know is that when it gets into, out of our hand and into his hand, all of a sudden, heaven begins to multiply something that is incredible. And it's something that becomes eternal. And uh, in that, we're so thankful for. And so as you grab your seed in your hand, uh, we make our declarations here. <laughs> Thank you. That as we receive today's offering, Lord, that we are believing you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, and blessing and increase. And so we thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs. That we'll have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Gateway Family Church, we believe that we can be relevant and still have a true experience with God. This is a place where healing and miracles are not just a thing of the past. So we invite you to join us for one of two special Easter services, Sunday, April 20th at 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. Make sure to invite a family member or a friend today. You know, I should invite my brother-in-law from Granite. Brother-in-law? You mean Pastor Greg? No. Gateway Family Church, get your calendars out and your pens ready because the month of April is jam-packed with stuff to do at the gate. We'll be having a video scavenger hunt on April 12th at 6 p.m. Now this is a night of competition to see who can make the craziest videos and the funniest photos. You will not want to miss it. On April 17th, we'll be having our spring cleaning fundraiser to help our students raise money for our summer camping trip at Camp Williamson. Also, another thing you will not want to miss. And on Sunday, April 27th, we'll be having our ACT, which stands for After Church Tonight. This time it'll be at Culver's. Delicious. And last but not least, we'll be having our Spring Fling. This night is filled with tons of fun and messy games. You will not want to miss it. That's April in a nutshell, here at the gate. Hey Gate Student Ministries, it's time to start making your summer plans. And something you've got to get on your calendar is our camping trip at Camp Williamson, July 11th through the 14th. Cost will be $170 with a $50 deposit due on April 16th. We'll have lots of fundraising opportunities so that you can get that money raised for the trip. Now the $170 covers your food, your lodging, and all the fun for the week. So what are you waiting for? Start making plans today to join us at Camp Williamson. Be a part of the 2014 outreach team. Join in and volunteer to help at various outreach events this year as we reach out to our community. We are currently looking for some awesome, friendly people to be on this year's team. We are going to take our bounce houses out to minister in five community events over the next few months. If you'd like to be involved, sign up at the Welcome Center today. Can I sign up? Of course you can. Our heart at Gateway Family Church is to make a greater impact with the tools that God has given us. Has Gateway Family Church impacted you and your family's lives? Now you can have that same impact on other people's lives by simply just sharing our weekly recap on Facebook. By sharing it, you instantly put what God is doing at Gateway Family Church in the hands of all of your Facebook friends. God has called each and every single one of us to impact the world around us, and now, it's never been easier. That was good. Thank you guys for helping me out here this morning. <laughs> it wouldn't have, wouldn't have been the same. That's, that's great. Thank you, Mr. Justice. Tomorrow night, uh, 
at Legacy Christian Academy, there's actually going to be a fundraiser going on at Revanelli's in Collinsville. So if you want to support the school, the Christian school, you can go out that night. There's going to be baskets out there, and our proceeds from the dinners that night will go to uh, Legacy Christian Academy. And so that's going to be at the uh, Revanelli's in Collinsville tomorrow night uh, from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So you can be a part of that as well. Um, are you guys ready for the word? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> that's good. That's good. We, we've been speaking, uh, well, last week we went into uh, Jude uh, verse 22 where it speaks about some having compassion, making a difference. Very short scripture, but there's a lot of power behind it. Some having compassion, making a difference. We went into the two disciples that were there with John the Baptist as the prophet of the day, speaks over the Lord and says, this is the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. And, and not only does the prophet call Jesus out as, as who he was, and then the heavens open up and, and the Father speaks from heaven, this is my beloved Son who I'm well pleased how many would have thought how amazing it would have been to be there in that moment? I mean, you're talking about incredible. The Father speaking, the Spirit of God descending upon Jesus like a dove, all right there in that moment. And how incredible that must be. And of all the people that were being baptized, all the friends and family that were there to support. But after it was all over, there was only two that began to follow Jesus. And Jesus turns around and begins to ask him, what is it that you want? And uh, they didn't ask for a prayer of impartation. They didn't ask him for theological questions or even how to pray. Their question was, where are you staying? And, and, and this is really launching into our hearts. Obviously, what speaks us loud and clear is we're thankful for being a part of divine encounters. We're so grateful for the things and experiences that God has brought us through, through amazing services, but beyond the service on a Sunday, beyond the conference of a power and love or John Paul, beyond these conferences uh, that, that are happening, afterwards, they're following Jesus and says, you know what, we're thankful to be a part of it but it's just not enough. Have you ever had to that position or that place in your heart to say, God, we're thankful, but it's not enough? God, we're, we're so thankful and grateful to be a part of it, but we want to know where are you staying? And Jesus began to say, well, then come and see for yourself. Aren't you glad we serve a God that allows us to experience it? That this is a walk by faith, but along the way of our steps of faith, he says, come and see, come and experience for yourself. You want to know where I'm staying? Does anybody want to know the dwelling place of the Almighty God, the place where he resides, the place where he's a part, to where you just don't go on Sunday and then go home to live the rest of the week, but you want to be able to go where God is throughout every aspect of your life. Can I hear an amen this morning? Amen. And this is what we're, that we're, we're taking up here as well, is that we see Jude one twenty two and some having compassion making a difference. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you would speak, you let your voice would go and divine and just go into the places of our heart that needs that change. We thank you, God, that it would be your voice that we hear loud and clear here this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, I don't understand why it's only some. We, we address that again I, I wish it would be more, but um, fortunately, it's only some. It's only some. Unfortunately, um, it's not even always the majority or most, but some. Some. I, why is it? It makes me scratch my head. I, I, I don't really get it, but out of all the crowd, there was only two disciples that followed Jesus in that moment. Um, the... Terrible statistic is this, that there's only going to be 2% of Christians that ever lead somebody to Jesus in their lifetime. Did you hear what I just read? Yeah. Only 2% is that the, the statistic of people will ever lead somebody else to Jesus. Why is it? Why would 98% of the church feel that it's okay or comfortable or ordinary never to reach out to somebody? Sure, it's intimidating. Sure, it could be something that's, that is out of our personality. 
But at some point, don't you think it's kind of worth having some compassion and making a difference? At some point, shouldn't we be able to have enough compassion to go, you know what, God, I'm, I'm an introvert maybe, or maybe I'm not an outgoing person, but God, if you will just lead me that in spite of my fear and in my fear, my shaking and my trembling, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and I'm, I'm going to reach out to somebody and, and, and try to reach out to somebody. Wouldn't you think that that would be something that we could do? And I know it is. We've gone through weeks of outreach classes. Our Power and Love School was incredible. We had over 500 people hitting the streets of our city, being able to share the love of Jesus, being able to reach out. And we are here to break the statistic on the percentages. Are you ready to be on the good grading curve, on the good side of the, of the grading curve? And this is exactly how... Well, sure, of, of course. If you guys would just uh, stretch your hands towards the foyer because uh, we're just praying for Anita right now. Father, we just thank you for uh, t- touching Anita's body right now. We just thank you for touching her heart, God. We just thank you for touching uh, the very places of our heart, Lord. I thank you for relieving pressure. I thank you for breaths being able to be taken. God, inhaling and exhaling. I just thank you, God. I just thank you for touching her right now. In Jesus' name, we release the healing word. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if she was in the healing line this morning or not. No? Well, she is now, I guess. So, so um, now... You know, it would be kind of crazy for us if uh, we had been trained in firefighting to pull up to a house that's on fire and just to sit in our trucks, wouldn't it? Would that be ludicrous? It would actually be inhumane. People would actually begin to question our morality, even if we're human. Um, And so... You know, when we have compassion in regards to somebody, when we realize uh, if there was a, a bridge and we knew that the bridge was out uh, and we had to do something to stop the oncoming traffic because if not, that they could go off the, the road, off the bridge into a place of destruction. Would we not at least call 911? Would we not go to the front of the bridge and wave and try to stop people from heading in that direction? Don't call us radical. Don't call us, uh, we're not handling snakes and we're not putting up boards telling people they're going to hell. All right? We're not wearing sandwich boards telling people they're going to hell. But we can stand in love and say, you know what? There is a better way. We can stand in love and say, hey, you, you got to get out of this house because it's on fire and it's burning. And I cannot just sit by, stand by, and watch this house go up in flames while I'm standing out there praying for somebody else to do something. Somewhere, at some time, somebody's got to have enough unction to say, God, I will do it. If there's nobody else, I will run into the burning house if I have to. I will tell the person that their house is on fire if I have to. And we got to quit waiting for somebody else to do it when heaven is waiting for you to do it. He's waiting on us. And as we could see that with this compassion, we can't just sit by and watch these things going on with silence in our lips, that we must be able to do something about it. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 13, Paul's speaking about every man's work. He says that it shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. We can see that there comes a time, this is in parallel in the book of Revelations, 
where there will come a time when our life is placed upon the altar and the fire hits the altar and the only thing that you and I did that made an eternal value or an eternal difference will remain. But everything else that was temporary will actually be burned and the only thing left will be ashes. And we find that our life will be laid upon an altar and looking and seeing as the fire refining the gold, the precious metals, the jewels, the things that will be remaining. And we can see that Paul's speaking about every man's work. Now, one thing we know for sure is salvation. Salvation is a result of grace. Salvation with no exception. There's nothing else that we can do uh, to try to earn our salvation. That's not what I'm speaking about here this morning. Our service and everything that we do does not earn our salvation. That was free for us. But once we get into and we step out of time and we step into eternity, we'll find that although salvation was free, there are rewards that are given out in eternity. There are rewards. When we get into heaven, the basis is on our faith alone. But what happens when we get into heaven to be adorned and the basis of our fruits of our faith will be what happens next. Now, in Scripture, because of time this morning, I only got about another hour, so because of time here, we have, uh, thank you, Mom. <laughs> there, there's crowns that we get. It lists uh, five different crowns in Scripture. There's the victor's crown. Uh, there's the crown of life. There's different types of crowns that are given when somebody, uh, uh, and, and the way that they live their life here on this earth. And as we peel back and we get to see parts of Revelation, we get to glimpse into eternal things that are happening in heaven. Uh, one of those is Revelation 5, 9, where it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Revelation, John got this glimpse as he looked beyond his time and he saw... Uh, into the places and moments of heaven to where he begins to give us the descriptions of these things that are in eternity. We do know that there's going to come a time when they get to lay their crowns and they get to lay them at the feet of Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't want you to get me wrong. Just the fact of me getting to heaven, I'm going to be, I'm going to be happy about getting to the gates and getting through the gates. Getting in is enough to celebrate throughout, throughout all eternity, okay? Don't get me wrong. But why, I don't want to just get into heaven alone. I want to be able to look around and go, you know what? Something that I did made an eternal difference. There's something, some way that I lived, some way that I loved, that because of something that I did, somebody else is in heaven. And, and, and sometimes it's not as large as we think it is what's going to make that eternal difference. Sometimes we break down that comparison thing and it eliminates us from thinking we uh, want to do anything because we feel like that we have nothing to give. We, we picture people like Billy Graham, Bishop T.D. Jakes. We picture these people that are standing before crowds and having crusades and uh, hundreds and thousands of people coming to Jesus. And then we warp over into our life and think, wow, that's incredible to be them. But, but when we look at what Jesus does, when he pulls things out of scriptures, when Jesus is talking, he's talking about like the widow's might, right? He's talking about the woman that to other people wouldn't think it was much, but it wasn't how much she had, but it was what she did with what was given to her. And so what is it that you have in your hand? Just ask, that, ask the person next to you, what is it that you have in your hand? In your hand. You better not be Facebook and texting right now. I'm telling you right now. What do you have in your hand? Is Lisa on Facebook? That's I think. I know we recommitted our lives this morning already, but we will have a second altar call. And... Uh, Look at that. We got words of knowledge is coming out from the congregation. This is unique this morning. Very unique. As we look into eternity, we see that there's going to come a time when we say thank you, not just by the lip service of our mouth. Heaven is singing songs like we read out of that thou art worthy, O God. 
Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Jesus. Now, how can we say thank you? How can we be able to go beyond? Now, we're a worshiping church. If you're visiting, it doesn't take long. I mean, we spent, uh, you think that was a long time? Come tonight. Uh, we're a worshiping church. We'll worship the whole service if we can. We love to worship, but when we take the song of worship and take it out into our life by saying, you know what? When they're up there and they are singing out that he is worthy, and they're singing out to Jesus that he is worthy, that there's going to come a time, and I want to be able to live this life to say thank you to Jesus, not just with my lips, not by just saying, Jesus, thank you for what you did, but I want to be able to have something that when my life is placed upon the altar and the fire consumes it, that I have something that I lived that was something that was eternal that I'm able to take so I can go before Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you for the price that you paid for me. And I don't want to be ungrateful, but here's everything that I got, everything that I received for living an eternal life, and I place it at your feet. And it's our way of being able to say thank you in eternity. I mean, how do you thank Jesus where he walks on streets of gold? How do you thank the Lord that has gates of pearl? How do you thank, now worship is incredible, but there's angels around the throne worshiping all all throughout eternity. How are we going to say thank you? In this moment, we'll be able to find this place in our heart and in our lives by saying, God, my life that I live, let it be a thank you unto you. The life that I live, let it be something eternal that I can say thank you. Thank you. It gives descriptions of jewels and gives descriptions of these crowns. And so if I can't have enough stirring in my heart of a compassion to win the loss because of the destruction they're headed to, then please, Lord, open my eyes to a compassion that I can look at to to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who endured the cross, despising the shame, But with joy, he was able to endure it. And and I want to be able to say with the compassion in my heart, if not for the burning house, if not for the bridge that's out on the road, can I pierce into eternity? Can I look and go beyond the sight of my eyes and look upon my Savior and let me have enough compassion in my heart stirred to be able to do something to make a difference to give him a reward for the suffering that he endured. Are you with me this morning? Do you hear what I'm saying? You've probably heard of the the Moravians. The Moravians were an amazing group of people. They were so sold out for Jesus. They literally have a time span of 100 years where they prayed 24-7 for 100 years for a move of God. The Moravian movement was so incredible It touched John Wesley's life, was affected by the Moravians. It came a a place to where when they found out about this island and found out about these slaves and, and, and they had such a passion to take the cross and the gospel to them that these two, there were two missionaries of the Moravians, they literally sold themselves into slavery for one purpose. And that was so that they could take the gospel that they could take the gospel with them. Can you imagine this? I want you to picture, they weren't born into it. It wasn't of the location of where they lived or their circumstances, but they came to the place where they made this decision. I'm gonna leave my life, my friends, and my family. And when the boat was leaving the dock, sailing away, as as the ship pulled away from the docks, they heard the cry lifted up from the missionaries. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. Somewhere they caught a glimpse that this life is larger than ourselves. Somewhere they caught a glimpse that I got to do something that's eternal. And there was enough compassion in them to make a difference because of the people going to destruction and because of the lamb to receive a reward. Can I be a part of putting a smile of joy? Picture when it says in Hebrews that he endured the cross with joy. He endured it. 
because he saw what he was going to have to go through, what the end result was. And so he saw thousands of years ahead into the future, and he sees you and me right now in Madison County, Glen Carbon. And that you and I can do something that places a smile on his face and able to bring a reward to his suffering. Can you grasp this? You and I, whether it's a widow's mite, whether it's a boy's small lunch, it may not seem like much to the other person, and it may not even seem like much to, to me. But, you know, one thing about the miracle of the feeding of the thousands, it's not like they got this huge catch to where it took, broke the nets and they pulled them in because supernaturally they were able to feed the people. What it was was a boy's happy meal that was able to, when they got to the place where they didn't have much to start with, but as they began to give, the cool thing, this goes beyond offerings and tithes. Are you guys ready? I've already taken up the offering, right? I'm not trying to get anything out of you, right? So this goes beyond taking an offering that whenever you give, it says that he gives seed to the sower. And so it may not seem like you have much, but whenever you break it off and you give it, and when it's going into something of the heaven's desire, and when Jesus asks the question, where are we going to get food? It's not because he didn't know. That's a whole nother message. Again, I got to wrap this up. But as they began to take the boy's lunch, they didn't get the mother load catch that was breaking nets and pulling in different ships to bring in. It was a boy's lunch. And so often we look at what we have in our hand and we think, that's great, Pastor Greg. That's great, Joyce Myers. That's great, uh, you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes. But all I have is a lunch. And it seems like it's only enough to feed me. And some days I wonder if I can be fed by it. But the moment we begin to take this little bit that's in our hand, we talk about it regularly, and we begin to give it, now heaven's touch comes upon it. But it's almost like it's not grown in my hand. But when I give away, and I don't know if, maybe it's just me, but have you ever felt like you don't feel like you have much to give? Or have you ever felt like I have nothing left to give? Because as they took the boys' lunch and they gave it, with maybe not seeming like they had much left to give to the next group, when they look, they find that there was more to give. Not in their own strength. But as we step into eternal values, he begins to give seed to the sower. That's why on Wednesday when someone received Jesus in Walmart at the outreach team, that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. As we begin to take what we have and we give it, we don't compare it with others. Some people have, you know, some pretty big meals. And then we look. The cool thing is, I mean, Jesus recognized the widow's might, and he also cared about every crumb. Because after it was all said and done, they took baskets left over, 12 baskets full. He wasn't going to waste it, but he took it, and they, got, and they filled up 12 baskets. How does that happen? It doesn't have to make sense. Heaven very rarely does make sense. We exchange our life for his. We exchange our love for his love. And in the process, we have more than enough to feed multitudes of people, and then we have some more left over. And that's the kingdom of God. God, stir with inside of us a compassion for the lost and for the Christ that we can give him of the rewards for his suffering. As the worship team comes, I'm thankful to be a part of a church that's breaking the statistic, to be a part of a church that's on the bending of the grading curve. This would be a part of a church that's able to reach out and share the love of God. Do you have degrees behind your name in biblical theology? Maybe, maybe not. Are they going to ask you questions that you might not know? Maybe, maybe not. But can I love them? Can I love them with an unconditional love? Can, can I track them down in Walmart on that motorized scooter and pray for them? Well, I look foolish at times, maybe, but is it worth it? 
Is it my personality? No. But there's a compassion that stirs me beyond my personality to do things that, that I will do only out of a compassion. Everybody stands. Father, I pray this morning for a compassion within the hearts of each and every believer here. I pray, God, for a compassion that's stirred in their hearts in such a way to make a difference. Lord, as we come into this place of our life that's like a vapor, as James speaks about, and with this one life to live, oh God, let it be a life that brings, that it brings the lamb that was slain, the reward for his suffering. Let my life bring a joy to the Savior. And let this reward in our life be something that's eternal. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen, amen. If you're here this morning and you still have any special prayer requests, whether it be healing in your body, prayer for someone in your family, or you want to make a, a, a commitment to Jesus, you want to surrender your heart to Jesus, the altars will be open as we close here. And uh, as the ministry team uh, comes forward, then we just welcome you as we worship with this last song. Just let you know we love you so much. And I can't wait to hear the good testimonies of the believers that are making a difference this week because of the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Worship with us. And we love you. If you got to go, you can. But we'll see you tonight. Need prayer? Step out of your seat now. I will give you all Lord, it's in everything, God. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will give you all my worship.
check us out at gatewayfamilychurch.com.